This is the Chapel Real Estate Show, episode number 36. Welcome to the Chapel Real Estate Show, your source for the latest real estate information so you can buy, sell, and invest with the best in Texas. Whether you're a first-time buyer, a current homeowner, or a seasoned investor, you've come to the right place. We're here to simplify all things real estate so you can achieve your goals of property ownership with your hosts, Daniel and Roger Chapel. What's up, listeners, and thank you guys for tuning into the Chapel Real Estate Show, your source for the latest real estate information so that you can learn how to buy, sell, and invest with the best. It's your host, Daniel Chapel, here with co-host Roger Chapel. How's it going, Dad? It's been a little while since we've uh, we've been with our listeners. So, how you been? Been busy, 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 and uh, yeah, I notice you have too. So, all's good in our world. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, today we've got a really great episode. It's going to be something that uh, we've been really wanting to share with you guys for quite some time. I know in our last episode we said we would release it for you next week. Well, here we are a month later. I know we're a little late to deliver, but, um, you know, as my dad said, we've been really, really busy both in the real estate world. And for those of you who don't know, I also have re-entered my, uh, my old, um, excuse me, my old uh, career. So now I'm back in managing restaurants and taking advantage of a really great opportunity there. So, um, you know, we've just been been locked and loaded and busy, head to the grindstone. Um, and now we're, we're ready to start delivering a little bit more content for you guys. So we've decided we're going to go to bi-weekly episodes just to let you guys know. So we're going to be updating our YouTube channel, updating our podcast um, so that you can expect a new episode from us every two weeks instead of every week. We want to make sure that we're taking the time to really deliver great content content for you guys and make sure that we're giving ourselves enough time to deliver it for you. So thank you guys for your patience. We really appreciate it. But today's episode is really going to be all about taking time for yourself. So we have a really, you know, a lot of great recommendations for you. So you're going to want to get a pen and a journal. Make sure you write down some notes because we're going to have some awesome podcasts for you to listen to, some TV shows, some YouTube channels, um, some uh, some books to read, a lot of really great stuff that you're going to want to take some notes on. So get your pen and pencil hand, or pen and paper handy, and uh, let's go ahead and jump right into the episode. With all that being said, Dad, what is today's chapel chunk for our listeners? Uh, great segue, and Daniel, i got to say it's uh, good getting back together like this. I, I actually miss this format, uh, and I miss working with you a lot. But, uh, you know, hey, it's just part of life and the way things go. So with that said, uh, today's chapel chunk, I think, is not I think. I know because I'm the one making it up. So uh, <laughs> today's chapel chunk is literally take time for yourself. Relax, enjoy life, and that old adage, stop and smell the roses, I'm telling you uh, that is so extremely important and beneficial to you as a, as a person, as a human being. And by doing that, you're also going to become a much better person around your coworkers, around uh, your clients, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just such a better benefit for you and your family. So that, that's today's Chapel Chunk. Take time for yourself, enjoy life, and uh, reap the benefits of, of all that hard work that you've been doing. Absolutely. Man, I'll tell you, the last couple of weeks uh, or even the last couple of months, I've really taken time to, you know, really take that to heart. You know, uh, as you know, my fiance and I have had a lot of craziness going on the last several months. She's been going through some health issues. We both got COVID over the last month. So we were recovering from that. And, you know, just a lot of different changes. And, you know, something that, that um, I learned, I started reading a book called Green Lights, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, it's a great book by Matthew McConaughey. And it, he really talks about, you know, stopping and, and realizing that in life there are green lights affirmations that tell us keep going you're doing great but there's also yellow and red lights in life and sometimes you have to kind of look back and hindsight's 2020 right but um, you know taking the time when you're in those yellow and red lights to really figure out what the green light of that situation is I think you and I both know that some of the difficult times in our life are really the making of us and you know finding the positive in every negative situation is is so important so um, that's something that I've really taken to heart this last you know few months that we've been going through all these trials and tribulations and all these changes in life and and kind of embracing those changes so um, if you are avid listeners of our show you have heard us talk about Brian Buffini I'm sure countless times 
And one of the things that he says that I really take to heart, and I love asking people this question so that I can get recommendations, but what are you reading, what are you watching, and what are you listening to? So today, we're gonna talk about all of that stuff for you guys today, give some of our recommendations of where we get our motivation, where we get our content ideas from, and how we stay motivated in this crazy busy world. So, um, Dad, let's get started. Um, you know, what are, let's, let's talk, uh, start with what are you reading? So, you know, you and I are both big readers. We love recommending books back and forth to one another. So what are some of the things that you've been reading over the last couple of months? So it's interesting that uh, we're also talking about listening because today uh, it's not just like you pick up a book and you start thumbing through the pages. That's awesome and it's great. But then there's also audible books that really help us, especially because you and I spend so much time on the road uh, driving around. We can listen to the audio books. We can listen to podcasts. We can listen to all kinds of stuff that, that still helps uh, keep our minds and our bodies sharp. So uh, a couple of books that I'm reading. Well, one that I'm reading right now, uh, and I'm actually reading two currently. Uh, one of them is an audio book that I'm listening to, and uh, I'll get to that one in just a minute. But one that I'm just starting to read is uh, this one called Exit Rich. And I got this from the Brian Buffini. Show. No, I'm sorry. I think this was off of uh, Bigger Pockets. So uh, this book here is actually more for a business owner such as myself. Uh, and it's funny because, you know, I'm recruiting new team members, and one of my team members saw. Uh, this book, and she's like, why are you reading that? Now I'm worried. Now I'm getting nervous. Well, this book, Exit Rich, is about how to develop one's business so that it's sellable. So one of the things that I've learned about real estate is, you know, uh, depending on the productivity of an agent, you know, the business or the, the team itself can only be as effective as its leader. So what I mean by that is this particular type of a book is designed to take a person like me and create a business so that at some point it becomes sellable. So that if I'm removed from that business, the business still continues to thrive. At this moment, my business isn't set up that way. And the reason being is I am the top producer in my business. And I can't make that sellable. I cannot sell myself to someone else and expect them to get the same result. So instead, what I have to do is build the business so that the business becomes sellable and it continues to not only thrive at its current state, but has the potential to grow for a secondary buyer. So with that said, I'm reading this book to try to help uh, establish my business. One of the other books that uh, I highly recommend to anybody who is a real estate agent uh, is by Gary Keller, and this is The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Uh, this book right here, I recommend that you read at least every other year, if not every year. I still have it. I still refer to it often. Uh, see, it's got my initials on the edge of it. Uh, this is an extremely important book. And yeah, I don't work for Keller Williams, never have. But that doesn't mean that I can't get valuable information from other agents, from other agencies. And uh, Gary Keller is probably one of the best in the business. So uh, yeah, I, I enjoy reading his books. What about you? What are you reading, Daniel? Well, um, you know, I, currently I'm reading Green Lights, but I'll, I'll step into that one a little bit because I want to touch on a couple of things that you said. So in that book, Exit Rich, you, you reminded me of another book that I've read that I know you've read too and that we've actually talked about on this podcast before, and that's The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. So if you remember, law number one is the law of the lit. A business is only as successful as the leader that's leading it. So, um, you know, you, you kind of touched on that. And that's another great book. If you're in any level of leadership, I don't care if you're a manager or if you aspire to be a manager, if you have your own business and, you know, you're, you're currently leading a, a large number of people, this book is absolutely crucial. I've dedicated a lot of the last years of my life into you know, really learning a lot about leadership and how to grow as a leader in general. And, you know, I think it's one of those things, the power of positive thinking, the law of attraction, whatever you want to call it. But this opportunity for me to go back to my old career and be a leader in the restaurant industry again, I think was a direct impact of the amount of time that I've developed myself and uh, dedicated myself to learning more about leadership. So, um, you know, fantastic book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And then another one, um, you just touched on uh, the millionaire real estate agent. Well, here's another one, the millionaire real estate investor. So for a lot of our listeners who aren't uh, maybe real estate agents, but are, you know, obviously interested in real estate because they're listening to our show, 
That book is, is absolutely phenomenal. The Millionaire Real Estate Investor is gonna give you a lot of the different strategies, show you a lot of the different types of real estate that you can invest into and how. Um, you know, it talks about the different loan types. I mean, literally everything that you need to know about real estate, this book is going to cover for you. So definitely another really great one to keep by your side if you are interested in real estate and investing. <clears throat> Now, another couple of books that I've been reading recently, um, The Greatest Salesman in the World, and this is one that I recommended to both you and mom. I don't know if y'all have had an opportunity to start reading into it or not, but um, it's a really, really great book, and contrary to its title, um, it's not only for salespeople. I think this is a great book just to kind of learn what are the best ways for you to um, conduct yourself in a business setting, in a work setting, in life? Um, it's really kind of uh, just touches on a lot of different principles that to me, I, I hold very near and dear to my heart. I think you and mom um, inadvertently taught me a lot of the things that I'm learning in this book or, or I guess reiterating in this book, but The Greatest Salesman in the World is a great one. It's a 10 month read, um, so there's 10 scrolls in it that you basically go through and you read each scroll over and over and over again three times a day. Um, and, and actually Matthew McConaughey talks about it in his book, Green Lights. He's done the, the full read uh, twice already. And uh, it's one that I've been working on for about four months now, four or five months. Um, but I'm telling you, this is a great book. Just like I said, gives you a lot of good principles to live by. Uh, one of my favorites right now is I will greet this day with love in my heart. Um, just, you know, a lot of good little principles to live by. Um, but anyways, so going into the next book that I've been reading and most recently reading, I'm about halfway through it right now, is Green Lights. So... For me, this one, I kind of want to talk a little bit back and forth because I know, you know, it's it's tough. You know, we, it's been a little bit of a, a red light couple of years, I would say, for the last, you know, year and a half, two years with, you know, COVID and all the different changes that, have, that, that has brought into every kind of market, every kind of business that's out there um, and how, you know, all business are operating right now. So um, let's kind of talk about green lights. Like I mentioned, you know, green lights is all about these affirmations, the things that tell you that you're doing well, but also there's yellow and red lights in life. So um, dad, let's kind of talk about some of the red lights that, um, you know, maybe you've experienced over the last year or two that have, uh, you've been able to find the green lights in. Wow, that's, that's a tough one. So um, man, uh, red lights. So I think the most recent red light that I had was my transition from law enforcement and retiring and not having another job to go into and for the next year just kind of bumbling around trying to figure out what I was going to do uh, because, you know, uh, retiring from law enforcement before I was 50 years old, I mean, think about that. That is extremely young to have a pension. Well, now, did I need to work? Did I have to work? Well, my attitude is, yes, I have to work. I cannot not work. I have to do something. So for the longest time, I, I mean, I kind of fumbled around for a little bit. So that to me was an extremely tough period. I actually went through some depression that uh, I didn't, I was unaware of it at the time. Looking back on it, uh, I went through some depression, which I learned later on is not very, uh, it's very common for folks who have retired from uh, law enforcement or just about anything. If that's the only thing that you've known for the past 20 some odd years, and now all of a sudden you're not doing anything, then there's a good possibility you could go through some depression. Uh, went through that, uh, survived that, not a big deal. Uh, but the fact that I know that and the fact that I went through that, it's, it's a pretty interesting uh, caveat. Uh, you know, as far as uh, the yellow lights, I don't know. I think we face yellow lights almost all the time. Uh, and to me, the yellow light is caution. Uh, I mean, it's just like approaching a yellow light. Do you go through that intersection or do you... Do you stop? And a lot of times, if it's wet outside and you're approaching that light too too quickly, you may opt to go ahead and go through it. Well, that's pretty dangerous, but you may actually have to do that. Well, in life is much the same way. Uh, things happen to us for a reason, and we can decide to barrel through uh, and take the, whatever the consequences are on the other side of that light. Sometimes they're good consequences, sometimes they're not. Or we can slam the brakes and take the chances on sliding through that intersection where we're not actually in control. So I really like Matthew McConaughey's uh, uh, red light, green light, yellow light analogy because we can actually play off of that in this kind of manner as well. And I haven't read that book, so I don't know if he does that or not. Yeah, no, he absolutely does. And, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things. He, 
I never realized how difficult of an upbringing and how intense of a life that this guy had growing up and, and some of the things that he went through at a very young age. Um, and it kind of gives a lot of perspective. But one of the things that, I, that I've really taken out of the book so far is just kind of embracing the changes, you know. Um, and, I, and I can't help but think of, you know, Brian Buffini always says life comes in seasons, right? There's a season um, when you're, you know, going through life as a young adult or, um, you know, as a child even. There's a season when you're in your mid-20s, your early 20s, your early 30s where you're, you know, finishing your education, getting into the real world, um, finding yourself in your career and, and, you know, all these different things. Um, and then there's that season of life where you're building a family, you get married, you start having kids, your kids start growing up, and then you have the seasons of when they're, you know, they're young and you go trick-or-treating and you do all these fun, exciting things, and then they start to grow up and then those, you know, the seasons kind of change and evolve, and then all of a sudden they're driving, they're going to college, they're doing all these other things, right? So, um, you know, Brian Buffini talks a lot about how life does, in fact, come in seasons, and I can't help but compare that to how, you know, the seasons change, right? There's There's especially here in Texas, right? Summer is hot. Last year, we had a winter that was incredibly cold. Um, you know, like we've had just kind of, you know, these these weird things that happen in life. And, you know, sometimes it's really easy to get caught up in the negative of that, right? Oh, it's 110 degrees outside. I don't want to go outside. It's so hot. I can't go out and do anything that I really like and enjoy. But there's also a lot of positives that come along with that, right? During the summertime, maybe your kids are at home or, um, you know, you get to spend a little bit more time with your family or for me being that I love the outdoors and, um, you know, I like going on hiking and biking trails and things like that. Well, in the summertime, it's too hot for that stuff. So I get to embrace things like the river and going out to the lake and doing things in the water and going to the pool and, you know, all these fun things. Um, so... You know, the same thing comes with the wintertime, right? I'm, I'm not a big fan of the cold either. I don't like the extreme hot. I don't like the extreme cold. But in the wintertime, we have, you know, fun things that happen. The, the holidays, again, time with the family, Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, you know, all these different things that, you know, really, there's, there's a lot of positives that come out of what some people may look at the negatives of. Um, and just like that, you know, there's, there's times of uh, dormancy, right, in life, not just in um, you know, the natural seasons, but, you know, in the, in the wintertime, the grass stops growing, the trees stop growing, things die, right? But they do that so that in the springtime, they can come back and flourish and, and be prepared to grow, right? So I think that the same thing when I go through stages of life where maybe I feel like I'm stagnating, you know, I feel like I'm not growing as much as I could be. But a lot of times that's important, right? You're gonna, you have to take that time and take that time for yourself so that you can, Take the time to develop, prepare, and get ready for those big seasons of growth because that to me is is extremely important, right? Yeah, you know, that's a good point. So, uh, you know, you talk about growth and uh, there's th to me, there's several different types of growth. You have growth personally, then you have growth professionally. So uh, the growth personally, I think uh, we all need to continue to grow uh, and that's growing whether it's... Uh, uh, like reading, like we're talking about here, or maybe uh, listening to great audio books or whatever. I mean, we're doing something to occupy our mind and to grow our mind, hopefully. Uh, professionally, of course, you and I talk about this all the time, and I'm very big on this, uh, about making sure that we stay on top of uh, our field, uh, our profession. And of course, now you with the restaurant industry, I'm sure you're concentrating on not just leadership, but things that are happening in the restaurant industry that you can stay on top of as well. So with all of that, uh, you know, some of the things that, I mean, when it, for me, when it comes to reading, um, I like to read not just on our profession, but I also like to read things that are just, you know, kind of off the wall that allow me to read, uh, just kind of uh, more entertaining. But I really find, uh, you know, some of the more enter entertaining reads for me, uh, and this is what kind of a nerd I am, uh, one of the books that I'm listening to right now is actually, it's called The Negotiator, uh, and it's the life and career of James B. Donovan. And James Donovan was known uh, as one of the greatest negotiators ever, uh, mainly because of what he negotiated. Now, uh, I've just gotten into chapter one, and it's narrated, uh, I think, by the author, Philip J. Bigger. Uh, I'm not positive on, on who's narrating it, but it sounds like it's a radio show from the 1950s and it's a broadcast kind of thing. So listening to it is definitely not something that I'm used to doing like that. Uh, so in fact, this is one of the first audio books uh, for me, 
But listening to it, I mean, I get a chance to listen no matter where I'm at, where I'm driving around. So it's pretty nice doing that. Uh, but then, you know, some of the other things that I like to do is I've read books on General Norman Schwarzkopf and his life and General Colin Powell, who uh, recently passed away. Uh, and then uh, uh, George Bush, uh, Bill Clinton. Uh, let's see, who else? Uh, a lot of leaders that, to me, not just military leaders, uh, and a lot of them are, oh, uh, 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 Mattis, General Mattis, reading his his uh, book as well. So these are all military leaders that, to me, of course, I was military. I was a Marine. So I understand that type of leadership. But to me, it's not just military leadership. That leadership also works over into the civilian world. And then to see all of the different posts that these folks held and then looking at their upbringing throughout their life. And the vast majority of them did not have an easy upbringing. They all grew up with very tough circumstances that helped create and make them who they are. So those kinds of reads to me are very fascinating. It's very entertaining to me. Uh, you know, I used to read spy novels, uh, always. I was always reading a spy novel somewhere. Uh, I haven't done that in a while because now when I start to read them, it just doesn't hold the same entertainment value that it used to. So it's kind of interesting. You know, you were talking about seasons of life. Uh, this is exactly the same thing. We go through these seasons where some things make a lot of sense to us and some things don't. So for me now, that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, older with grandkids and kids that I can work with that, uh, you know, have, have all done very well on their own. So it's it's right. I mean, the, the seasons of life. You and I are in two completely different seasons. It's funny. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, um, you know, before we move on to the next uh, the next phase of the episode where we talk about some of the, the things that we're listening to, um, I want to kind of give a couple of other book recommendations. So I've got, you know, as I'm sure you all have noticed, I have a lot of books in my background. I'm a big fan of Harry Potter. I love reading the Harry Potter books. I've got some other, you know, a supplemental books to Harry Potter over here. But this little stack here is kind of a, a book of some of the motivational books that I really like to read that I refer back to very often. Uh, one of them, The Compound Effect, which I know we've both read, Darren Hardy. Um, you know, he's, he's absolutely phenomenal. Um, basically just talks about, you know, the little things that you can do to compound your growth compound. We've all heard of compound interest, right? You save a little bit of money, the interest starts to grow that interest, you know, the interest that you've built also accrues more and more interest. So the higher your balance goes, the faster that growth happens, right? Um, so, you know, that's, that's really cool, but the compound effect is not only effective when it comes to money or numbers, it's also very effective when it comes to personal growth and development. So that's another really great book. Um, one that helped me a lot, two books actually that helped me a lot financially, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, and The Latte Factor, basically, you know, just just realizations about money and how your spending, um, you know, really can impact your financial growth and stability. Uh, great, great reads. Um, how to win friends and influence people and, and think and grow rich are two other ones that I really, really enjoy. Um, so, you know, just phenomenal, phenomenal books, but dad, what are some of your books that you would recommend to our listeners? Yeah, so there's one that's extremely important when it comes to communication, and that is The Five Love Languages. And, you know, that book has been around forever, and it was actually recommended to us by your sister. And uh, your mom and I read it, I don't know, earlier this year, and I've got to say, even for, we've been married almost 30 years, been together for 32 plus years. So for us going through this book, and we each read it, uh, we read it together, and Wow, that was an eye opener. Uh, and that book really did help open our lives. And I'll tell you, if you want to have a successful life, it's not just about you and your reading and all that. It's about the partner that you choose uh, along your life. And I have been extremely blessed and fortunate with a partner that uh, uh, she and I have just been uh, great for each other. Uh, and then, of course, reading this book really did help us in our communication with one another as well. So uh, it's, uh, that's a constant work in progress. Uh, so even after 30 plus years of marriage, we are still continuing to grow with one another. Uh, so I think that's probably another lesson is don't give up on growing. I mean, we still have a lot of growth to do. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one that actually uh, Liliana and I read, 
about three years ago and that we're, we're referencing back to now. We actually just took the five love languages quiz a couple of days ago um, and just kind of reiterating, right? Again, life comes in seasons. So, um, you know, for me, I think uh, one of my love languages actually changed from the first time that I took that quiz. And, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things that you're constantly evolving, you're constantly growing. Um, and, and, you know, the, the seasons of life change and you change with them. So, uh, you know, it's important. Another one that uh, on the topic of, of relationships is mindful relationship habits, which kind of touches on some of the five love languages stuff, but also, you know, just some other relationship uh, strategies and things that you can do to kind of help um, communicate in the right love language and, and grow and, and be mindful to one another and how you're feeling and, and, you know, all those different things. So yeah, no, absolutely. Those are great, great books. So let's move on to, uh, some of the things that we like to listen to. So dad, what are some of your favorite podcasts that you listen to? And some, uh, you know, we already mentioned a couple of the audio books, but what other stuff do you like to listen to? So one of the podcasts that I listen to most frequently is of course, the Brian Buffini show. Uh, I listen to Brian Buffini all the time and I'm trying to find my podcast now and I can't seem to find it there, but, uh, I listen to him all the time. Uh, he's got some really good stuff and, you know, on a rare occasion, it'll be something that I'm not interested in and I'll force myself to listen to it anyway. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Um, let's see who are some of the others bigger pockets love listening to bigger pockets especially for the investment side of it the other thing i get from bigger pockets and brian buffini both is it's a method of uh enhancing my communication skills as well because listening to those folks and hearing how they communicate with their uh, uh with their clients and their people and everything really does help me uh when the communication with mine yeah, absolutely. And you know, while we're on the we're all we're on those topics, you know, Brian Buffini, I've got a few episodes that uh, I saved from him that to me, I just listen to over and over and over again. Uh, and one of my favorites is 100 days to change your life. So I don't know if you remember that one. But it's you know, for me, it was extremely important for me going into a new career. What are the things that I can do in my first 100 days? It talks about the significance of that 100 day time period. It's just long enough that you feel like you can make a difference, but not so long that you feel like it's too far to look into the future. Um, and then he goes in to talk about, you know, the, the first 100 days of the presidency and, you know, the significance of 100 days and how it's just a landmark for, you know, progress and, and getting, you know, kind of touching on the compound effect, getting your, your traction so that you can really take off and, and see your true success. Um, another one that I, that I really like is uh, The Miracle of Your Mind. So Earl Nightingale has some, some various recordings uh, that he never had released that um, Brian Buffini, because of his relationships, because of his commitment to helping people learn and grow and develop, he has a relationship with Earl Nightingale's wife, who then gave him these never heard before recordings that he's releasing on his podcast. Um, you know, and, and I love Brian Buffini because he says it at the beginning of every one of his episodes, but it's all about the mindset, motivation, and methodologies of success. And to me, that is, you know, everything. I love getting my day started listening to him. Um, he puts out an episode every week, and they're always, always great quality. So another podcast that I listen to more for entertainment purposes is The Way I Heard It with Mike Rowe. And for those of you that don't know who Mike Rowe is, if you've ever seen that show, Dirty Jobs, well, Mike Rowe is the one who is on Dirty Jobs and got that whole thing started. And he has a fascinating career in listening to some of his stuff. And he does this show with a longtime friend of his and producer. Uh, they go back 30 plus years and uh, to hear some of their stuff. And a lot of it, when I first started listening to the show, I literally stumbled on it. I don't even know how. Uh, but I started listening to it because, I mean, I like Mike Rowe's voice. I've always thought he had a great voice for radio. Uh, and uh, so uh, listening to him was always like, oh, man, I, I, he has those one, one of those very distinctive, recognizable voices. So when I heard him, I'm like, oh, what's this about? Well, it was about his book. And he goes through the chapters, and at first he'll have some little small anecdote, uh, and he'll talk about it. And at the beginning of his show, it reminds me of the old Paul Harvey shows. And for those of our listeners that don't know who Paul Harvey is, Paul Harvey used to do a show, a, a, a story, and I don't remember if he did it daily or weekly or what he did, but he would do a story, and this story and his voice, too, were also very distinctive. And the stories were just so compelling, that I mean, gripping. You could listen to the entire story, and then at the end of it, he would drop a bombshell on you. And it, it was always about, you're trying to figure out who this person is about with the story. 
Yeah, so, uh, but Paul Harvey uh, just had one of those distinctive voices. So when I came across listening to Mike Rowe, that's what came to mind is, oh, this sounds like Paul Harvey. And sure enough, he would be telling the story, and then all of a sudden, boom, there would be this bombshell. Not quite the same as Paul Harvey, but uh, still, I mean, it's a very interesting way to look at, at storytelling. So that's what I like about his. And let's see, who else do I listen to? I have Tom Ferry. Uh, Gary Keller has a podcast called Think Like a CEO. Uh, and I've listened to those episodes as well. Uh, he doesn't release them very often, but uh, those are those are pretty good. Yeah, and I like those because they're they're short, they're easily digestible. You know, it's nothing crazy. You know, a lot of times you look at podcasts that you you almost need to have quite a bit of a commute or have you know thirty forty five minutes to invest to actually listen to the whole thing. But um, yeah, that one is is great because it's you know I think some of the episodes in the first season are only five minutes long. They're really quick easy to digest, great content packed into a really short episode. So I like that one too. That's a good one. I, I had one that I was listening to a while back, uh, and I don't know how I find some of these things. Literally, I think they just pop up and start playing. But uh, there was one on the criminal justice system in San Antonio of all places. And come to find out, the uh, host of that show is actually uh, a very close friend of another friend of mine in San Antonio. And I found that out one day, just looking on Facebook, and I saw this connection. I'm like, wait a second. So I reached out to her and said, hey, do you know uh, so-and-so? She's like, yes. And I'm like, well, I'll be damned. I listened to her podcast. So it was pretty funny because I, I had no idea the two of them were connected. So, uh, But, yeah, I mean, I stopped listening to that one uh, a while back because of San Antonio. I don't have anything to do with San Antonio. So, And, I, again, I'm not sure how somebody's podcast pop up. No clue. Yeah, no, and, and I've got some other ones too. The Gary Vee audio experience is a good one. So Gary Vaynerchuk, he's, uh, he's got a, a marketing company, uh, basically got started with social media marketing, and he's got some really, really great content that he puts out. Um, let me think. As you mentioned, the Tom Ferry uh, podcast experience, that's a good one, especially if you're into real estate. Uh, the One Thing is a great one, um, and, and The One Thing is also a great book. That's where that podcast originated from, but... Um, you know, phenomenal book about really niching down, focusing um, and putting your attention on one thing. Right. Um, a lot of times it's really easy to get uh, caught up in the big picture and kind of feel like you're being spread too thin, looking in too many different directions. And the one thing is really all about, you know, that big picture. There's a lot of little components that come into that big picture and focusing on the one next move that gets you a step closer. And, you know, being able to focus on that one thing until it's done versus, you know, multitasking. I've never been a good multitasker. Anybody that says they're a good multitasker, I'm sorry, I don't believe it. Uh, I imagine that if you did those three different things that you're working on at once individually, you'd probably get them done twice as fast. Um, so to me, you know, the one thing was a book that really resonated with me and they've got a podcast that supplements it. So it's, it's really good stuff. So, um, and then also, you know, as you mentioned, there's a lot of great audio books out there. Audible uh, by Amazon makes it really easy for you to find great books. So if you don't like reading or you don't have the time to read, no excuses. You can listen to just about any book out there. Um, but something else that's also important to me is, is music. You know, I love listening to music, all different kinds of music. You know, Brian Buffini talks about listening to Baroque style music when you're either working or when you're writing goals and it helps you focus. Um, but I've even built different playlists in Spotify of, you know, I have one playlist called uh, uh, Be Happy. I've got another playlist that's called Be You. Um, and it's just kind of different songs that, that I've listened to that resonate with me, whether it's the lyrics or the music or whatever and how it makes me feel. Um, and, you know, I think that's important too is, you know, taking you know, things that are a little bit, you know, more enjoyable and, um, you know, finding the ways to, to connect with them. I think that's really important, too. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, I guess it was two years ago uh, I decided to learn to play guitar. And I actually have the guitar right behind me here. And now I, I strum that guitar probably 20 minutes a day, 20, 30 minutes a day, almost every day. Uh, and I have noticed I've gotten a little bit better at it. But I've also noticed, too, that the songs that I play are from all different genres. Uh, mostly country music, just because it's acoustic guitar. But there's a lot of other songs out there that uh, you can adapt to uh, the acoustic guitar that sound really, really good. So I'm in the process of working on some of those as well. But you're right, the music thing... Uh, 
You know, music is inspiring, it's relaxing, it's motivational. It just depends on what it is that you're listening to, what your goal is for that 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 time that you're listening to it. Uh, I mean, your mom uh, constantly listens to all this different upbeat music, whether she's working around the house or doing her workouts. I mean, the, the upbeat, uplifting music just really adds to that mood. And then if you're feeling down or you're, you're depressed and all that, then people listen to that kind of music. Or if you're trying to go to sleep, which has been my problem here lately, uh, you're listening to all kinds of stuff, whether it be sounds or the ocean or, you know, who knows, uh, or, or just listening to classical music. And believe it or not, I found a couple of classical music uh, pieces that I'm like, oh, wow, this is nice. And instead of going to sleep, I find myself getting into the music. And I'm like, this is not helping me any. <laughs> no, that's funny that you mentioned that because, you know, next segment, we're going to talk about what are you watching, right? And uh, kind of a good little segue into it. There's a YouTube channel that I love listening to. It's called Circle and uh, it's C-E-R-C-L-E. -E. And they have basically live music sets in some of the most gorgeous sceneries. I mean, there's a, there's a DJ playing music on a hot air balloon in the middle of a hot air balloon festival. And there's just, you know, cool balloons flying all around him. He's literally flying over the top of everything with just blaring speakers. There's a, there's, you know, I, I was watching one last night where there's a guy playing the piano underneath the, uh, the, uh, the Aurora Borealis, the, the lights. And it's just, I mean, amazing stuff. A guy playing on the top of a mountain in the middle of a winter storm and like just all of this really cool stuff, great music. And, uh, you know, that's a really, really cool one that I love watching and listening to. Um, and like you said, you know, I was listening to this piano yesterday. I just kind of picked one of the, one of the, uh, sceneries that I wanted to watch. And I mean, just amazing, amazing music and it's, it's really good stuff. Um, but so, so going into what some of the things that you're watching. So, um, you know, there's so much content out there, right? We've got things like Netflix and Hulu and HBO. And, you know, there's just all of these different places where it's really easy to get caught up in, you know, binge watching television shows and things like that. And, you know, I, don't get me wrong. They absolutely have their place. But they're also a big distraction, a way for you to shut off your mind and, and not really pay too much attention to some of the, the more motivational things that I think are really important to take daily, right? Zig Ziglar says, motivation is like bathing. It doesn't last and that's why they recommend it daily. So I love that. I love watching motivational things. One of the things that I've been watching a lot lately has been America's Got Talent. So that's one that's super entertaining, but it's also jam-packed with inspirational stories, people going through really difficult times and then having these phenomenal opportunities to put themselves out there in front of the world. I love watching that show. But Dad, what are some of the things that you like to watch? Yeah, so it's funny that uh, I got rid of live TV, golly, probably two or three years ago. So I don't watch live news anymore. Uh, if I want the news, I can get it from my phone or website or something. Uh, I don't get the newspaper anymore. I could care less. Uh, and I, I stopped all the news, breaking news notifications and all that on my phone a long time ago. Uh, and, you know, it's been, it's so much more peaceful. Uh, I don't engage any longer in the political nonsense that uh, is happening on social media and all that. Although I have to say, I do get fired up about a number of things. I'm just not going to engage with people on that anymore. So I just found it's not very healthy for me. Uh, I got rid of all live sports. Uh, you know, I used to be a huge uh, NFL fan, uh, uh, the Rockets and the baseball and all that. And I literally got rid of all of them, all of them. And the reason being is, well, it doesn't matter. We're not going to get into why. I got rid of it. So after that, it's like, okay, so what am I going to watch on TV? So your mom and I started watching like the Netflix and your Hulu and all, I mean, all the things you just said. And now we found a number of shows that we can watch uh, and other movies, of course. We see movies from all over the stuff. But uh, different shows, some of them are comedies, and they're, they're just great distractions. Uh, and some of them are things that, uh, I mean, I wouldn't recommend to kids. Uh, but, you know, now you guys are all grown-ups, so I can recommend these shows to y'all and then let y'all get engaged in them. So one of them that we're watching right now is called Succession on HBO Max. Um, and we're watching that with your older brother and uh, having the conversations with him. And I mean, it's pretty interesting to see how these characters develop and then how we can separate the character from the actor and things like that. So we're having that kind of a conversation, which I never imagined having with Diego at all, ever. 
But uh, we had that kind of conversation. That was pretty cool. Uh, so we watch uh, Billions or Billionaires or whatever it is on uh, Amazon Prime. Love that show. Uh, that's a pretty good one. Uh, Bosch, uh, kind of a detective thing that was on Prime. Um, oh, I don't know. Just a number of different. I like the little one-hour shows where you can binge watch them if you want. Or you can just watch an hour or two a day and, and call it a day. Uh, it's great for when the weather is pretty horrible, which doesn't happen often. But, uh, you know, on those days, we can sit around and watch these movies and whatnot. So great way to, to just break away. I don't get a lot of inspiration from those kind of things because I get it from other places. So when I turn on the TV, it literally is to disengage from everything else and just watch the TV. Yeah, absolutely. And don't get me wrong. I've got a lot of those shows, too. I mean, I've been watching The Morning Show, which I know we got into a, a while back. That one's, I mean, just addicting, addicting. Such a good show um, and really makes you think. I know we had some pretty, uh, some pretty serious discussions uh, around some of the things that happened in that show as a family when we were watching it together last, uh, I think it was around Christmas time or something like that. Uh, but, you know, just... That's that's a really good one. I've been watching The Blacklist lately, which is just kind of an entertaining show about a, a criminal empire. And, you know, those things I know you enjoy watching them, too. They're a lot of fun. They're cool. And, you know, it just it's it's definitely some way to unplug and, and entertain yourself. Um, you know, just just really, really good stuff. You know, another show that I like watching and uh, is Atypical. And, you know, a lot of people are like, hey, typical, what, you know, what? I, I just enjoy the story behind it, mainly because it's about an autistic young man who uh, is able to function, but then hearing his logic uh, versus everyone else's logic and trying to cover things up and protect ourselves and all of that with him and his, his naivety and his innocence and being able to just say what's on his mind uh, is very, you want to talk about inspirational, Atypical is definitely one of those shows I really enjoy watching that one. Yeah, completely unfiltered. I mean, it's just the funniest thing. When it, when it goes into his mind and thinks about the stuff that he's thinking, I'm just like, this is hysterical. I love that show. And, and you know, there's another one called Love on the Spectrum, which is actually, uh, it's, it's basically, you know, autistic couples and, you know, them navigating the dating world. And, you know, some of them are in, you know, serious relationships. And it's just, it's a great, great show. It's good stuff. And, you know, like I said, it's inspirational. It's, to me, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, I feel like everybody should be able to just come out and, and say what they're thinking. I feel like that, that uh, level of communication is so refreshing to me. It, it's great. Oh, yeah, there's definitely no filter. And there's no filter because you can tell that they are not trying to hurt anyone's feelings. It's what's in their mind, and that's what comes out. And it's awesome. It's, like you said, it's refreshing. There was another show, and I, I, it's a comedy, and I can't remember the comedian. Uh, he's an American guy, and he goes to Britain, to London, or to England anyway, and he's married. Oh, my gosh, what is that so? It is so totally inappropriate, it's not even funny. But it's hilarious. Your mom and I started watching it, and I'm telling you, we binged that thing. I think we watched every episode in a matter of a week. Oh my! And we were constantly laughing. It was just stitches. But then we're also like, you know, we can't share this with the kids. <laughs> even with y'all being adults. But I'm telling you, it's pretty funny. If I can remember the name of it, I'd put it out there. But it's a pretty good one. Man, that's too funny. Um, you know, some of the other stuff that, that I, uh, enjoy watching, uh, you know, like I said, my fiance was going through, uh, you know, some pretty difficult health, uh, health problems she's still currently dealing with, but she's doing much better. Um, but you know, you can't underestimate the power of positive thinking. And, uh, you know, I just looked up inspirational medical stories on YouTube and just one story after another, just, I mean, amazing stories of people overcoming just unbelievable odds you know, that kind of stuff. I love watching that. I love watching, you know, Zig Ziglar and um, Earl Nightingale and, you know, they, all these all these uh, inspirational speakers who, you know, have are no longer with us, but their content lives on forever, I think is, you know, just really, really good stuff to watch. Um, you know, we've got so much, uh, so many different avenues where we can see so much information. And, you know, as you mentioned, right, you can turn off your notifications for the news, the sports and all that stuff. And then who's in control of what you're watching? You are. 
So to me, that is incredibly important, you know, just knowing what you want to put in. You put the good stuff in, the good stuff comes out. That's another Brian Buffini quote that just sticks with me. Um, so, you know, love watching different stuff on YouTube like that because you really can search whatever you want and I promise you there's a video on it somewhere on YouTube. Just look it up um, and you'll, you'll find whatever it is that you want to watch. Yeah, absolutely. So the last thing that I want to talk about in our episode is going to be, you know, as we mentioned, this episode's really all about taking time for yourself, taking time to, you know, stop and smell the roses, as my dad said, um, you know, and, and to me, something that's really important is taking that time for yourself. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to do just to, to kind of get time alone is going out and exercising, whatever that means for you. I mean, there's so many different methods of movement that you can do if it's going for a walk or maybe going for a run. Uh, I've been playing basketball with friends. We have a new Frisbee golf course right down the street from our house, less than half a mile from our front door. Um, you know, there's just so many different ways that you can get out there and move and, and have fun. Um, to me, that's, that's really important. Dad, what are some of the things that you like to do just to kind of, you know, decompress and take that time alone for yourself? Yeah, so you brought up some really good points. And, uh, you know, recently I started doing the regular exercise routine again, which I had been missing for a long time. And now, of course, both of my knees have given out on me. So uh, I'm at the point right now where I can't do the exercise and it's driving me freaking crazy. But the exercise is extremely important. It's good for your body. It's good for your mind. It's a good way to break away for a half hour, 45 minutes, or even an hour a day uh, and take that time for you. It's necessary. The other thing that your mom and I love to do is travel. And of course, COVID put the kibbutz in that. We were supposed to have a trip to Europe two years ago. We still haven't been able to go. Uh, it looks like it might be on the table again for next year, possibly. Uh, but, uh, you know, earlier this year, we went to South Carolina. Then we made another trip to Florida. Uh, both trips were fantastic. I sold houses both times that I went. Yeah, you tend to do that every time you leave town. <laughs> Yeah, and well, now we're getting ready to leave for two weeks, uh, we're, and we're leaving the country, so I anticipate selling something else while I'm, while I'm down there. But uh, uh, we booked a cruise a couple of three weeks ago, and uh, it's our longest cruise yet. Uh, it'll be 12 nights, and uh, we're looking forward to that. We'll be leaving out of Fort Lauderdale and then literally going for two weeks and then coming back. Uh, and during that time, one of the greatest things about cruises is when we get on the boat, we throw our phones in the safe, we shut them off, and we disconnect. We are no longer connected to the world until we decide we are. And uh, it's so relaxing. And your mom being in the hotel business for all those years, regardless of where we went, if we stayed in a hotel, she was always working. Uh, I mean, because she's always looking to try to help somebody or make sure this is clean or that's clean or whatever. She was always in work mode. When we get on a ship, it's a whole different mindset. We can both relax. Uh, we get catered to at a level that we've never uh, experienced anywhere else. So for us, it's the cruises. And uh, that's fortunately, we're, we're able to, to do that here. In fact, we leave Sunday. Yeah, yeah, that'll be exciting. So um, yeah, another thing that, that we like to do to kind of take time alone. Um, I love journaling, you know, taking the time to just kind of get my thoughts out of my mind. A lot of times, you know, We've got so much stimulus around us. It's it's really easy to just get your mind cluttered and a little foggy. So it's great to kind of get your thoughts out, put them down in a journal. Um, and, and not only that, but it's a, a great way for you to look back and see how much you've grown and progressed. I know every now and again, I'll look back at journals from four or five years ago and, you know, times where, you know, I, I didn't have direction or I wasn't sure what I wanted to do next or, or you know, difficult situations that I was in with my work or personally in different relationships and stuff like that. And it's, it's really cool to kind of go back and, and give you a, kind of a baseline of where you were at and where you, you know, where you are now, kind of how far have you come? Um, you know, as we mentioned, growth is so important. And a lot of times it's easy to forget the things that you've accomplished, the things that you've overcome. So journaling is, is a really great way to, to kind of, you know, take some time alone and get your thoughts off uh, out of your mind and onto the paper. Um, meditating, as we've mentioned, reading, um, you know, taking time for prayer as, uh, you know, I, I know for me, uh, over the last few months, I've definitely gotten a lot closer to God. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things that, um, you know, people believe different things, but taking the time to, to believe in something bigger than yourself, I think is important. Um, and, you know, taking that time for prayer, um, has definitely helped me to, 
to get get a little bit more focused and you know maybe it's the law of attraction or whatever you want to call it um you know i i think it's uh it's important to take that time for yourself i agree wholeheartedly well dad uh you know i think that's pretty much everything i wanted to talk about in this episode i think we've touched on just about all the points we had but uh i mean do you have any closing thoughts for our listeners today referrals 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 i haven't said that in a month yeah right <laughs> well uh, yeah you know as my dad mentioned referrals we love you know i mean this whole episode is basically a bunch of referrals a referral for you to go take a listen to some podcasts go look at some books go check out some of these youtube channels and stuff that we've been talking about um, but even further than that dad digging a little bit deeper what do we mean by referrals so uh, that's a great question. So uh, I, I can actually give you a couple of examples. So I've had people reach out to me just within the last couple of weeks. Uh, one person was looking for a CPA. Uh, I've had somebody else looking for a landscaper. I've had somebody else looking for uh, my recommendation on a contractor to do some additional work for them. So uh, that's three separate things that are, are kind of roughly related to real estate, but really aren't. Uh, and then yesterday, I got a phone call from somebody asking about a camera, of all things, looking to know, well, what kind of a camera was used to take the pictures of my house uh, on a listing that I did for them? Fortunately, you and I have these cameras, so I was able to say, hey, this is the one. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so the referrals, I'm telling you, it's, a, you name it, you name it. It's about everything. Yeah, Absolutely. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to, to listen to our podcast, to stay tuned in and listen to all the episodes that we've got released for you. Again, this is episode number 36. It's hard to believe that we've put this many episodes out. And when we just got started with this thing, what, I think it was January, maybe February that we released our first episode. So, you know, thank you guys so much for listening to us and giving us a reason to keep putting content out there. Um, you know, we really enjoy this time with you. I say it every episode, but thank you guys. Don't forget to leave your reviews, uh, comment, share, let us know what you want to hear about next. Cause you know, uh, delivering content for you is, is a passion of ours that we want to continue to pursue. So thank you guys again for taking the time to listen to us. And this is the chapel realty group signing off. Thank you for joining us this week on the Chapel Real Estate Show. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with a friend and leave us a review. Find us on social media at Chapel Realty Group and online at chapelrealtygroup.com. Until next time.